the John Peter Muhlenberg Church Leadership Award. Reverend John Peter Muhlenberg understood the times in which he lived. In January of 1776, he preached a sermon from Ecclesiastes 3.8. And after reading, there is a time for war and a time for peace, he removed his clerical robe to reveal his military uniform underneath. And he challenged his congregation to help secure America's freedom. His personal conviction and determination to uphold the truth convinced 300 men to join him in the 8th Virginia Regiment of the Continental Army. Would you please join me in welcoming to the stage Pastor Barry Clardy. I think your fan club is in the house. Those who study history know this nation was, re was birthed as a result of timely preaching and spiritual leadership. John Peter Muhlenberg knew the signs of the times, and he preached the issues of his day, and he took a stand regardless of the cost. Pastor Barry Clardy is such a man and is being recognized for his community involvement. CCV just learned that he is preparing a summer sermon series entitled Taking Back America. A person from his congregation wrote on Facebook, all of us who sit under pastor's teaching week after week, listen as pastor challenges us to get outside those four walls of the church and get involved. We watch as pastor leads by example, as he equips us in the word encourages us to put on the full armor of God so we can have a strong foundation. He is not only equipping us to face our everyday battles of life, but spiritually speaking, he has taken off his clerical robe and is leading us in the war between good and evil. It is with pleasure that we present this evening Pastor Barry Clardy, an Ecclesiastes pastor who understands the signs of the time. Congratulations. Thank you. Some years ago it was said that in Wheaton University there was a master skillful piano player filled the hall with those who had come to hear the mastery of his music. At the end of his playing, the sold-out crowd stood to their feet in loud applause, shouting encore, to which he asked the question, is there just one among you that would like to play the same music you have heard? One little boy, age seven, sitting on the front row, raised his hand, oblivious to the cheering crowd who wanted the same behind him. And he chose this young man to come up and to join him as he sat down. He gave the instruction to this seven-year-old boy, whispering in his ear, don't worry, don't panic. Just do what I tell you. When I tell you to play, I only want you to play one note, on time, every time, loud and clear. You got it? One note, on time, every time, loud and clear. The boy nodded, and all of a sudden, he nudged him, and the boy played his one note. Around this young boy came the arms of the skillful pianist, as he began to play along with this boy who had mastered one note, playing at one time, on time, and every time. It happened to me when I began to think about the one note that we're asked and requested to play. It's not a, an obligation. It is a blessed opportunity. It is not just an honor, but it is a responsibility, biblically for us to stand without compromise and to speak to a culture who otherwise wants to remain silent in a day where political correctness is preferred over standing for truth even when it costs you. The Lord reminds us that we are not in charge of playing all 88 keys. It hit me today that on the piano are 88 keys. In this state are 88 counties. Each pastor, many pastors playing their note for each and every county. My prayer is this, is that when I look at this award, I will not see, receive it with any pride or undue recognition, but receive it for all of those pastors 
who join with us in our clerical robes with a heavenly call while we are on earth to play our one note, to play it loud, to play it every time to make a difference. I would like to say to Phil Burris and to those who were the CCV, thank you for the privilege of me receiving this on the behalf of so many who could not stand on this platform this evening. Thank you for playing your note. There are days I look at you and what your staff does and I wish, Lord, I wish I could play that note. Then it reminds me he's given us all an individual note to play. As it is with so many, thank you for playing your one note. Thank you for help making the difference. And thank you, Phil Burris, for the privilege. God bless you.